Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to talk about why Palantir is actually very likely to fall after the earnings and I don't think that this is going to be a good earnings and why I think that but there is some silver lining in this so I'm gonna give you a detailed version of why I think what I think it's going to be cool so make sure you stay tuned and if you like this content please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos that are coming out. So it's going to be a very interesting quarter and a very hard one to predict for many, many reasons. So the stock has rallied up 50% from $6 in the last few, basically just in January alone. And normally this is a super bad sign before earnings because, you know, you have to really have a knockout earnings if your stock goes up that much and then you're very likely to fall on earnings. But just the last two, three days, Palantir has crashed uh, circa 17%, leaving us in a really, we don't know place. Are the expectations high or not high or what's the deal with this earnings? Uh, then, as the company, this is also what makes the earnings very hard, the company has been doing really everything right. Carp has been, you know, normal, a human, uh, you know, very down to earth uh, on all of his interviews. Uh, he is possibly getting coaching. Uh, he made a joke about it. I don't know if that was a joke that he's getting coaching, but whatever they're doing is definitely working. He doesn't seem as crazy as he was before. And they are really, really shifting the narrative with their uh, foundry conventions. They have already done three uh, since the last quarter, essentially. They just started it right before the Q3 earnings call. And in since I think they did one in Q4 and now they did one in uh, Q1. And this is really, really shifting the narrative from them being a secretive spy company to uh, really being a very useful data analytics and AI company. And they have even unveiled uh, a foundry marketplace, which they did in true Palantir style. And we still don't know us, the YouTube creators, still don't know anything about it. So if you know where I can find data about it, please let me know in the comments. But they ended the live stream when they were announcing it and we are in the dark as of now. Then they have been signing super many contracts that have very, very high value. But here's the confusing part. None of the above that I just told you have anything to do with this quarter's financials or the next quarter financials. They are very good for the long term of the company, but it's in the long future. It has nothing to do with how Palantir is doing now. And if you wonder why I did a very good video uh, that is about understanding Palantir's business model, and I'm going to link it uh, on the card that will pop up up there. So you can go ahead and check out that video. But in essence, what I said in that video is it costs a lot of money for Palantir to onboard new customers. And probably in the first year, they don't make any money uh, from new customers. So what you would see in the bookkeeping uh, or in, in the quarterly reports is that they have a high amount of new customers and that actually increases their costs and drives down their margins. So the next year you would have very low margin, uh, very uh, high costs. And then the years after, as these customers start scaling and Palantir doesn't need to use uh, their software engineers on these companies, that's where the margins would go back up and you would see very significant cash flow from these companies. So it's very misleading. And on top of it, Carp in many interviews now has basically said that Q4 has been a blowout quarter. But what is a good uh, quarter for Carp? It's probably not a good quarter for Wall Street. I happen to be on Carp side and I'm a very, very long-term uh, investor. So I'm very happy to hear this, but probably CARP means that they got a lot of new customers, which again will mean that their margins will shrink and uh, their profitability will be less. But on the long term, it's super good for the business, right? So if, again, I'm, I'm really curious to see if my suspicion is correct. We have to wait for the earnings call to, to find out. But if this is the case, Wall Street is not going to like it. So to really understand what's coming in the earnings call, let's look at what they have guided in the last earnings call. And to be honest, having been able to look at it in a new unit of time, it was really a horrible earnings in Q3 and they had really horrible guidance. Let me show you what I mean. So first of all, 
What is not here is that they're projecting that they will grow 30% uh, year over year for the next foreseeable uh, years. And this is very much missing. Question mark if they're going to put this back. I don't think that the chances are very high for that. For the full year uh, 2022, they were guiding for 1.9 to 1.92 billion. And then excluding the impact of the US dollar, it would be uh, this much. And the adjusted operating income, they're guiding for 386 million. It's a very, very narrow range. Very interesting guidance. You know, Netflix has uh, uh, guided, I think it was Netflix, that they said we are adjusted uh, earnings are going to be from zero to four billion dollars <laughs> and look at how precise this one is um, So I put this in my table that you can view if you are part of the patreon Which is actually the first link in the description box below and then you can you know use your own adjust um, Assumptions change around the table and you know do your own thing with it. So I think it's very very useful. So again link in the uh, description and I added in uh, their guidance uh, here. But one thing that I have changed is that there is no currency impact. I, actually, to be honest, I don't know how they uh, calculate or what is the reference point for the US dollar. However, I did look at the chart of the US dollar and it has fallen against the euro 10% in the last quarter. So actually the exchange rate could be a headwind in this quarter and it could significantly lead to a beat if they count it from Q3. But I don't know if they count it from Q1, what is their reference point? Because then it will still be a headwind. So I was thinking that it will be a little bit of headwind. So I added that they will do 515 million. That is my estimate for their top line. And that is only a 19% year over year growth. So this is where you start to see the horribleness that Palantir's growth is really, really slowing down. You can see in Q1 2021, it was 49, 49%, then 36, 34. And you can see it's just going down. And it doesn't get any better when we go to the adjusted operating uh, margin. You can see that this is also steadily going down. And again, I took the number that they have uh, been uh, guiding for. And to be honest, I didn't add back here the currency change. So if we say that all the currency gains go straight to the bottom uh, line, which might be, uh, then I have to add 15 million here and let's see what happens. You see, then we still only go to 18% operating margin, which is very, very low. So this is not good. Then let's look at some other things. I'm gonna go into why my thoughts about this and it's not as bad as it looks, okay? But it's, going, it's coming soon. So now I wanna show you a few charts that are very important from Palantir. So here, this is another thing where you can see a very big slowdown. They have been touting how good their commercial business was doing and you can see that it was growing and the growth was accelerating and then it started decelerating and in Q3 it was really, really bad. And again, uh, this cannot magically increase without the revenue uh, increasing. Uh, so my hopes are not very high for this. I'm happy if it shows any kind of growth. Uh, but I don't really care about this number, but I just want to say don't have your expectations up about this number. Then they break out the US commercial. And even here, there is a significant slowdown. This number could go back up to the 70s, 80s. But again, it's hard for this number to go up without the revenue, uh, you know, significantly go, uh, growing, going up. And we know that they are not really having a good guidance um, for this year. Then... We have the government and this was a nice uh, highlight uh, because this one was slowing down and it started re-accelerating. And I expect this one to also continue re-accelerating and this would be a good news. Now I'm going to show you the most important thing. This is the only thing that I care about in the earnings call. Actually, I'm going to go more in detail about this, but this is what I want to see continue. I want them to gain new customers and i pretty much know that on this front they knocked it out of the park because there has been so much announcements of them getting new partners and you know expanding on existing contracts that i'm sure that this is going to be uh very good but i'm telling you if ever 
the customer number starts dropping on Palantir, I will shit my pants and this that would be really a thesis breaker for me. But again, this number is probably going to be stellar and that is very good for us uh, long-term investors. So now what do I want to see in the earnings? So I will not care about the year-over-year -year growth. It's going to be ugly, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm not caring about Alex Carr banging on the table. I had a little misspelling here. And I will pretty much not care about anything uh, on the earnings call except for the customer growth uh, continuing. And I want to see a guidance uh, or I hope to see a guidance where they say that the, they are having a re-acceleration of commercial revenue. I actually don't care so much about the government business because my bullishness on Palantir comes from the fact of how much free space they have uh, in the commercial space. And I think that's the same with most bulls. And probably the government side is going to slowly re-accelerate, but the commercial side really has slowed down. And I want to see a change in that. And I really hope to hear uh, some guidance on that. And I want to see the stock-based compensation coming down. But again, by far the most important thing is the customer number growing. If you could just tell me, Vince, Palantir is continuing to grow the customers in the same rate as before, I wouldn't even need to listen to the full earnings call. I'm still going to do it because I'm a prudent investor. But seriously, that's the only thing that Palantir needs. So... Again, it's very confusing times. There is a lot of, uh, you know, very good things happening with the stock, but I don't think that this earnings is going to be very good based on how low guidance that they have given themselves. And even if they beat the guidance by a quite wide margin, uh, everything is still going to be slowing down. The margins are going to be slowing down. So a lot will depend on the earnings call and if carp gives a good guidance i believe the stock has a chance to rally uh, but i think if we just see a normal carp who talks his normal way and they you know keep the guidance or even uh, they keep uh, what they promised and maybe they even beat a little bit but they don't really say how it's going and they don't give a clear plan to investors i think the stock is going to fall after earnings and of course, I will reevaluate my thesis and I will post everything for you guys so that you can see. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments, what are your expectations for this earnings call? And why not check out the Patreon? And I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.